For ages, alchemists pursued their dream to turn base metals like lead into gold. They were amateurs. Modern scientists and innovators have beat them to it by turning sand into brain power. From one of the most plentiful materials on the planet, they are creating semiconductors, those tiny devices that power the world economy. The name gives it away. Microprocessors are so small that you rarely remember they exist until they're gone. When they get stuck in strange supply chains, a lot of things stop functioning because they now power every electronic device, from your smartphone to the kids' toys, from the computer to the car. The Colossus of 1943 was the first electronic programmable digital computer, and the name was apt because it was as big as a living room seven feet high by 17 feet by 11 feet. It was a marvel of engineering, but had to be strung together by four miles of wire and guzzling power. Extrapolating from this technology, a single smartphone today would have to have wires that could reach around the planet and billions of potential points of failure. There must be a better way, thought Jack Kilby in 1958, after he had just been hired by Texas Instruments Company. He arrived at the office in the middle of the summer, just as everyone else had left for vacation. So he had plenty of time on his own to think big. What if we could make all the computer's components in the same semiconducting material? A material that conducts electricity, but only partly so the flow can be controlled. In that case, there would be no need for wires. And so, in September 1958, Kilby built the world's first integrated circuit. There were no wires. The current just flowed gracefully from one element to the next via the semiconducting material, germanium. But the world wasn't convinced. After all, it was difficult to see the need for all those microchips back then. In an effort to prove its value, Kilby developed the pocket calculator. The idea was monumental, but germanium had its limits. So a team at the small startup Fairchild Semiconductor International replaced it with silicon, the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust. You can get it out of sand, common sand. Cheap and fast mass production was now possible. Plus, Germanium Valley doesn't have quite the same ring as Silicon Valley. Entrepreneurs and engineers continued to innovate, doubling the number of transistors on a chip every two years or so, according to Moore's law, until all these devices and technologies became possible. The first chip had two transistors. Today, a single graphic chip can contain more than 75 billion transistors. Smaller and smaller, making a bigger and bigger impact. And today, from smartphones to automobiles, the whole world runs on them. Hey, check out these other great videos from Free to Choose Network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get updated on episodes of New and Improved with me, Johan Norberg.